Namaste. Uh, welcome to this uh, video. Today, I'm going to talk about a very important topic. Uh, such an important topic that while analyzing a horoscope, you should not miss it. Uh, this is what classics say and our sages uh, recommend us. But today, we have completely forgotten it. And specifically, the astrology that is now being practiced, you know, taught by uh, generally known to us. In that stream of astrology, these things are not talked about much. But if we go to a traditional astrology, as you may know that I myself have learned from a tradition which is six generations old, right? So in tradition, we highly uh, use these planets and highly recommend it. These are known as Aprakash Grahas or non-luminous planets, right? So yeah, you heard it right. Uh, generally, we believe that in Vedic astrology, there are nine planets. Sun, Moon, Mars, Mercury, Jupiter, Venus, Saturn. But that's not true. There are a total of 19 planets. These nine planets are there and added to this, there are five Upagrahas. That is Gulika, Mrityu, Kala, Yamakanta and Ardhbrahar and five Aprakash Grahas, non-luminous planets that is Bhuma, Parivesha, Upaketu, Indrachapa, and Paridhi. Right. So today we are going to learn about this five uh, non-luminous planets known as uh, told in Sanskrit as Aprakash Grahas and their analysis is very important. The information about them is very important in the traditional stream of astrology from where I have learned and I belong to. If you read a horoscope without considering these planets, it will be considered a, a big Aranas mistake. Right? <coughs> these planets, uh, you have to calculate them and there is a formula for their calculation. You need not calculate them as they are included in modern softwares. Right? In computer, uh, Jagannath Hora, that is a free software, have their calculation. Right? In mobile phones, uh, I'm not aware of uh, many softwares which calculates them. So I don't do a lot of astrology in mobile. So pardon me for that. Regarding the calculation of these planets, I have an article that is available on my website, www.shubhamalok.com. You can go to the website. Once you go to the website, it will look something like this. And in this website, you go to this blog section right here. When you go to blog section, you search for uh, this particular article. that you will, uh, currently you will find on page number two, Upagraha and Aprakash Graha introduction. In this article, I have dealt about the calculation of this Upagrahas and Aprakash Grahas and also have given an example on how to analyze them. That you can go through it, go through this particular article Right and uh, learn about their calculation. Today, I will deal about the results that these planets give. Out of these planets, these Aprakash Grahas, Dhuma, and Parivesh is considered very deadly in all species and destructive. Leaving uh, Dhuma and uh, Parivesh aside, other Aprakash Grahans are not considered that bad, to be very honest with you. Right? So, yeah, they are not considered that bad. First, I will talk about the description. What is Dhuma? The description of Dhuma is like uh, Dhuma is a fume of cloud or it is like a smoke, right? You know, so Dhuma is 
look, Dhuma looks very smoky. Vyakti path is a falling meter. Parivesh is a halo or a disk that surrounds the sun or moon. Indrachap, Indradhanush or Kodand, right? all three names for the same entity, is the rainbow that you see in the sky after the rains. And Dhuma Ketu is a Ketu. So what is a Ketu? Basically, Ketu is a broken part of a planet, like a meteoroid. But as meteorite is completely made up of uh, stone, like meteorite is more like a stone, right? So complete meteorite is Vipipath, whereas Upaketu is not a complete stone. It have other substances also. Hence, this is what differentiates the Vipipath and Dhumaketu and Ketu, uh, Upaketu, right? As I told you, you know that these planets are bad. So you have to open a horoscope and check where these planets are situated. Whichever house these planets are situated in, there will be a problem related to that house. There will be some issues related to that house. Sages go to that extent of saying that if someone is having Bhuma or Parivesh situated in the seventh house, conjoined with the seventh lord, they may never get married at all. If someone have Bhuma or Parivesh situated in the fifth house, they may not have a child. Right, so uh, predictions like these are made. Before I go deeper and show you the example, just remember that Dhuma and Parivesh, these two uh, Aprakash Grahas are more deadly as compared to other Aprakash Grahas. Uh, what we will learn today is that leaving Dhuma and uh, Parivesh aside, other Upagrahas are also considered benefit in some sense or the other. But Dhuma and Parivesh is also always considered a malefic, not also, always considered a malefic. How do you check their position? Like this is how the Jagannath Hura looks like when you open it. Here you can like, uh, yeah, so this is the horoscope for the moment. Let's take it as an example chart. And where you see this Rashi chart, you right click over it and you will have choose a body which choose a view which bodies to show. Click on Upagraha view and there you will find mention of these planets. This DH is Dhuma, PV is Parivesh, VY is Vatipat, UK is Upaketu. And IC is Indrachap. We are only considered with these planets. MD is Mandi, GK is Gulik, KL is Kala, AP is Ardha Prahar, YG is Yam Gantak, MRI is Mrityu, and they are Upagrahas. We are not dealing with that today. Along with this, in this section where you get the you know planetary degrees, etc., when you scroll below, you will find the position of these planets as well. You will find, find the position of Guma, 16 degree Cancer. Position of Vitipa, 13 degree Sagittarius. Position of Parivesha, 13 degree Gemini. Position of Indrachapa, 16 degree Capricorn. And position of Upaketu, 3 degree Aquarius. Now, <clears throat> the general uh, prediction will be, as I told you, whichever house Guma or Vitipa is situated in, there will be a problem issue related to that house. So to such a great extent that sages have told that there will be complete destruction and annihilation of that house, right? Complete destruction will happen. Looking at this horoscope, taking this as an example horoscope, Bhuma is situated in the 10th house and Parivesh is situated in the 9th house. So it should actually destroy all the professional prospects because there is Dhuma in the 10th house and it should make the person very unlucky because there is Parivesh situated in the 9th house. But that's not always the case. And this is what we are going to talk about. Like despite the popular opinion, which takes Dhuma, Parivesh, Upaketu, Indrachap, and these planets as always malefic, this is not true. 
in some houses these planets give very good results also and not all of them are considered very bad some of them are considered very good also right so we are going to talk about this only today right and uh, but i should uh, you know specifically before i go back to uh, special points just remember three things into your mind bear it in your mind very clearly before start point one is if you analyze a horoscope without analyzing these planets your prediction is bound to get wrong see the parampara or the tradition which i belong to highly desist or discourage things such as intuition etc in the parampara being a representative of the tradition our approach is pretty simple that astrology is a shastra shastra means a structured stream of learning and being a shastra predictions should be based on authentic principles of the science rather than being based on judgment fluke intuition or anything like that we don't believe it to it we believe that astrology is a science that can be taught and once someone have learned it properly they can predict using it without having any spiritual sadhana without doing any mantra or without without having any intuition or anything like that right this is what we believe in the parampara even sages uh, recommend that the result of any planet the result of any house any event any dasha should never be predicted without looking at these planets otherwise the prediction may go erroneous and in my practice i have particularly found that all those horoscopes which look very bad troublesome problematic but when you look at their lives when you look at the lives of these people they are very successful happy right this is because of these planets only these planets have the power that they can turn a negative looking horoscope into a beautiful result giving horoscope and because of the astrologer not being aware about these planets they may falter in their judgment right so let's go uh, to it and before i jump there this is a small small request that i have uh, for your betterment of course and that thing is you know like uh, what i have recently found teaching my students like i have taught some more than some 500 600 students by now i think the only problem is you know they don't think on the word meaning or what it may imply right so when we say astrologically that someone is unlucky what does it mean when we say that someone is unlucky that means luck is not supporting right so if the person uh, you know like it is a case like you know like if someone have a examination tomorrow and they don't study somehow thinking that uh, you know somehow thinking that okay uh, never an issue you know i, I by god's grace i will uh, you know be able to a crack the examination tomorrow because the person being unlucky they will not be able to do that certainly right because the luck is not supported this doesn't mean that if this guy studies properly they will still fail not at any given point of time right so this is something that is that is to be clearly understood success is indicated by the 10th house if the 10th house is afflicted then it may mean that even after uh, studying very hard and doing everything success may not come right but the person being unlucky doesn't mean that right so keep this point in your mind okay uh so what i am basically going to do in this uh, in this video is that i am going to tell you the result of these planets one by one in those houses where they are considered good and and we will first start with the planet dhuma which is considered very inauspicious now there is a very basic thing 
Dhuma and Parivesh, they are considered inauspicious or malefics. In traditional astrology, from where I belong to, malefics are good in the third, sixth, and eleventh house, and tenth house also. Right? So malefics are considered good in third, sixth, tenth, and eleventh house also. And if Dhuma is situated in these houses, they give good result, right? So I am specifically mentioning those houses where these planets are good and what result they give. Whenever you look at a horoscope from now onwards, make a note of this video and I will quickly uh, write an article on which houses these planets behave good in. Right? So there will be an article related to that. I will drop the link of that article in the a description of the video. Also, my article regarding the calculation of Aprakash uh, Graha and Upagraha, uh, the link for that article will also be in the description of the video. Check that out, make a note. And next time onwards, when you look at a horoscope, don't forget to look at these combinations. These, these are a total of five planets. And any three of them, or even two of them, being placed in a good house gives such an advantage to the horoscope that it can modify the worst looking horoscope to the best resulting horoscope. So without wasting our time, the planet Dhuma, when situated in the third house, makes a person very intelligent, valorous, generous, sweet-spoken, and wealthy. When the same uh, Dhuma is situated in the fourth house, mostly all the bad results are told, right? So because it is situated in the fourth house, there will be lack of happiness, separation from mother, a mother who is not emotionally supportive, right? Uh, no happiness in life, uh, uh, delay and denial in getting lands and property, etc. All these four things are, all these things will be told. But there is one good result for Dhuma in the fourth house. That is that the person will know about Shastras. The person will know about Vedic sciences. The person is well versed in astrology, mantra, tantra, yantra, and all these things. And to be uh, like to be very very honest with you, uh, when I first went to my guru, uh, you know he he looked at my horoscope that if I can. Like really excel into astrology or not. And he never told me about anything. Then I asked him later on that, sir, what thing you looked at? You know, before selecting me as a student, he said, you have Dhuma in the fourth house. That makes one knower of the Sastras. That's why I selected you. Right. So th this is the, you know, this is the importance of it that we give uh, in Parampara, in the tradition. When it is in the sixth house, it makes the person powerful. By powerful, uh, we mean that there will be uh, very few or lesser diseases in the life of the person, right? He wins over his enemies. He wins over uh, all the competitions in life. Very good for uh, competing, competition. It makes the person famous keeps him free of diseases and the person is very influential as well. When the Dhuma is in the seventh house, there are generally bad results. As I told in the starting of the video also, this makes the person, you know, not getting married, bad marital life, like war, fight, competition in life, humiliation, struggles, right, accidents, these things it gives. But another a positive result for Dhuma in the seventh house is that such a person is Pandit. Pandit means someone who is well-learned and is a great intellectual, right? But this uh, Pandit is without talents, right? So this is a, when Dhuma is in the seventh house, it indicates that someone is very intellectual and learned, but he don't have the talents to use this uh, capability of himself for his benefit. When this uh, Dhuma is in the eighth house, generally bad results are given, you know, short life, uh, loss of longevity, uh, early death, and all these things are told. But specifically, when the Dhuma is in the eighth house, it is told that this is the person who will fulfill the promise that they make to anyone. When this Dhuma is in the ninth house, it is considered very good. 
one have children uh, their children prospers well they have good relationship with their children they also are wealthy respected kind and they take care of their siblings also when this dhuma is in the 10th house one is blessed in the matters of progeny one is very fortunate satisfied in his life very intellectual happy enjoys their life and also fulfills their promise they are someone who are you know like who remain devoted to their words and when this dhuma goes to the 11th house it makes the person wealthy respected by the society the person is quite rich have a lot of uh, properties and ornaments the person also looks beautiful and whenever like you know i, I told you not to understand the result of uh, to understand why a particular word is told by sages so when we say beautiful what is a beautiful body a beautiful body is a disease free body also if someone is diseased they don't look beautiful right so whenever we say the person will be beautiful also mean that the person will be disease free the person knows art the person is humble and the person is into music i will tell you this is very beautiful <clears throat> whenever there is a malefic situated in the 11th house or whenever there is a malefic aspecting the 11th house the general one word snapshot prediction we will give is interest in music singing abilities are predicted right so a malefic influence on the 11th house is very essential for someone to have their luck in music right so that's it for uh, dhuma the next planet is vyatipat right that is a uh, soon soon using the word vy in jagannath hora when this vyatipat is in the third house it makes the person have a fixed intelligence intelligence fixed intellect what what does it mean to have a fixed intellect fixed intellect means this is a person who decides to do something and achieves achieves it without getting much distracted right so it is someone who will think of something and will finish it before everyone else because he is fixed on achieving his target this person is a fighter he is generous rich and have good political and governmental connections and have a commanding position in his life and profession when this vyatipat is in fifth house it generally gives bad result related to the fifth house loss of progeny children's not listening to you lack of talent etc etc et cetera, multiple things but along with this it also makes the person beautiful and whenever we say beautiful understand disease right now uh, if this vyatipat is in the fifth house one uh, generally remains disease free but certainly these people will also have some disease right so whenever the dasha of the planet will come who is sharing the house with vyatipat in the fifth house who is aspecting the fifth house from any place because vyatipat is situated there or whenever the dasha of the fifth lord will come because vyatipat is situated in the fifth house so the fifth lord will be the dispositor of vyatipat whenever the dasha and the dasha of these planets fifth lord planet situated in the fifth house planet aspected in the fifth house will come the result of vyatipat will also come to pass and because the result of vyatipat in fifth house is the person being beautiful they will get freedom from disease in the dasha the dasha of these planets right this is how the classics are to be understood and this is the way parampara advises us to understand the classics parampara means tradition when the vyatipat is in the sixth house one wins over their enemies and competitions one have a well built and disease free body they are well versed in all the arts and weapons and they have a calm disposition so when we say well versed in art right this word will come again and again this is another way of uh, this is a very like you know common word in classics and stolic classics when we say well versed in arts see now there are many arts like when you read kama sutra there are 64 arts that one is supposed to master right and these include being able to make idols right being able to color their hairs being able to take care of them uh, right these are the arts including sexuality right uh, talking sweetly 
saying right word at the right point of time and having control over the tongue having having control over the speech to know how to please someone to know how to you know get uh, something uh, some work done from someone these all come under the aspect of art so whenever uh, this word is used you know well versed in arts that means the person is well versed in uh, day to day things right when this vyaktipat goes to the ninth house this is a person who listens to all they are into business if they are not into business they should be in business because there is a lot of growth for them in business and they also have many friends many supporters they are sweet spoken uh, they know many subjects right and they are loved by their spouse as well when this vyaktipat goes to the 10th house one is wealthy religious knows about dharma knows about their religion or they hold a very prominent place in their religious circles and they are also prominently followed by people who follow the same religion they are very intelligent intellectual and well read as well when the vyatipat goes to 11th house they are very rich they are respected they speak truth they have a firm decision they have good vehicles they have many vehicles and they once again 11th house malefic they know about music they are interested in music next comes the planet paridhi also known as parivesh this paridhi is generally giving uh, generally given good result in maximum of the houses right so in the lagna it makes one, when this paridhi is in ascendant this is parivesh yeah when this parivesh is in ascendant this makes the person intelligent the person always speaks truth they have a calm disposition they are rich they are blessed in the matters of progeny they are pious and pure in nature they are philanthropist and they are highly devoted to their preceptor guru when the paridhi or parivesh uh, indicated by pv in jagannath pura is in second house the person is very rich beautiful that means disease free body they enjoy life uh, when whenever we say the person is an enjoyer that means he is in such a position in life where he can enjoy things that means he have enough resources he have enough money and he have enough peace of mind to enjoy things in life right they are not tensed or bugged by anything because if someone is tensed they will not be able to enjoy even the most beautiful thing in the world right another is other results for uh, parivesh in the second house will be the person is happy uh, the person is pious and the person is very influential and powerful uh, what uh, whenever uh, the classics use the word na the person is sukhi right i generally translate it as the person being happy right and when a person uh, when a person is happy, a person is happy when he is tension free disease free he don't have to worry about things in life and when someone don't have to worry about things in life when they earn sufficient amount of money uh, take care of everyone sufficiently and when they have supportive people around them then also they don't have to worry right so these results come to play when the uh, parivesh is in the third house uh, one have a very cordial matter relationship they are loved by their spouse they have a beautiful body and bodily comforts that mean they live disease free they are dedicated to gods they are very much into worship they also get uh, benefits uh, through worshiping gods worshiping deities like spirituality is very beneficial for them and along with this uh, they are into employment business is not recommended for these people and they are highly devoted to their preceptor and guru when this parivesh is situated in the fourth house even the enemies of this person whatever move their enemy state in the end it will be beneficial for him only and this person also having the one having uh, parivesh in his uh, fourth house this person also never want to hurt their enemy and always thinks good of their enemies also so basically this is a person who thinks good and Uh, good for everyone right and this person having parivesh in the fourth house is knows about music 
and arts so maybe they are learned in music interested in music listen to the music a lot take music therapy and things like that right when this parivesh goes to the fifth house one is loved by their spouse one is rich well mannered uh, there are auspicious results after marriage so that means person becomes lucky after marriage and what do we mean by the person being lucky after marriage is that the financial social and other status of the person is increased after marriage and the person follows his religion strictly when this parivas goes to sixth house one is famous rich enjoys their life they are kind to every living thing and they win over their enemies and what i have told you when we say someone enjoys their life what does it mean that one is tension free and everything is taken care of in his life that mean they sufficient they earn sufficient amount of money and they have a uh, family members who support and love each other right when this uh, parivesh is in the 8th house it is someone who knows about spirituality they have a calm disposition well built and disease free body like firm on their resolution focused on spirituality and they are also powerful both bodily and good influence in the society as well when this parivesh goes to ninth house it is someone who is blessed in the matters of progeny so they have family progeny their progeny uh, does well in life there is good success related to progeny etc right they live a comfortable life they are beautiful rich of firm disposition firm disposition uh, that means if person decides to do something they will be able to complete it without getting much distraction right getting distracted uh frequently in life is a major issue uh, leaves many thing uh, many things many tasks incomplete right right they are also authoritative and they are satisfied in whatever little they have in life so generally lives lives a complaint free life is what is meant by this term when the parivesh goes to 10th house this is someone who knows about art you know what it means right see uh, this is the particular reason you know in between videos also i keep on giving secrets keep on explaining things this is the particular reason i recommend you that you don't skip the video right so listen to every word and every bit of it see me and my channel is a, not an entertainment channel right it is a teaching channel i am a teacher right so i have the approach that you have with your teacher right don't skip the video listen to the things carefully if you want to get utmost benefit out of it right right uh, going to the going back to the point when the parivesh is in the 10th house one knows about arts they are in a position to enjoy their life they are rest they have a strong body that is also disease free they are kind hearted clear hearted right like they're compassionate and they are well versed in all the shastras all the streams of learning that means it is someone who is well versed in you know indian sciences basically so it is someone who is well versed in sexuality like kama sutra kama shastra well versed in management artha shastra and well versed in things such as astrology numerology body reading face reading samudrik shastra jyotish shastra it etc right if this parivesh goes to the 11th house one get uh, one gets happiness uh, through his wife uh, right so they love their spouse their spouse loves them they have many qualities they are intelligent they are also loved by their family members and their kinsmen like kinsmen are the kinsmen is basically the extended family of own siblings cousins and friends etc but when the parivesh is in the 11th house one will have digestion related issues all right coming to the next planet that is indrachap jagannath hora denoted as ic indrachap this is good in all houses it is taken as a benefit this planet is taken as a benefit when this indrachap is in ascendant one is endowed with wealth ornament and resources one is thankful lives in the company of good people and they have no physical defect when we say no physical defect first of all it have the literal meaning that it has and secondly 
when we say, see, one of the major physical defect is not being able to produce a child. So when we say no physical defect, it means the person is able to produce a child and they will certainly have a child. When the Indrachev goes to second house, when it's sweet spoken, but the person is adamant, rich, respectful, well-read, knowledgeable, beautiful, that means a disease delight, and is religiously inclined. When the Indrachev is in the third house, one, is know, one knows about arts, and you know what does it mean? And generally, other results for the third house is bad. So when Indrachab is in the third house, only uh, the knowledge of different arts, knowledge of how to deal with day-to-day -day things come. And other than this, other bad results of the third house, loss of sibling, not having good relationship with sibling, a lack of courage, etc. These other bad results are given. Are felt in the life of the people who is having Indrachab in the third house. When Indrachab goes to fourth house, one is happy, wealthy, have a lot of resources, have a permanent source of income, they live a disease-free life, and they are respected by people who are respected, loved by people who are placed at higher positions in a society. When the Indrachab is in the fifth house, one is beautiful, that means a disease-free life. They have a good foresight, which means having good predictive and analytical abilities. They are devoted to gods, they are sweet spoken, and they are successful in all of their undertakings. When this Indrachap is in the sixth house, one wins over their enemies, one is happy, they love a woman, which also indicates to love marriage, they are pious. They gain money in almost all of their undertakings. There is no business in which they suffer a loss. When the Indrachap is in the seventh house, one is splendorous. One have many good qualities, one know about sastras, like knows about spirituality, face reading, etc., all the Indian science. Right? One is religiously inclined and one is also popular. When the Nirchab is in the ninth house, one is ascetic. See, tapasvi or ascetic generally means someone who is having a dedicated uh, target in his life and who uh, devotes everything for that target. The person having in the job in the ninth house take vows, promises, and completes them as well. They are knowledgeable, famous, and popular. When this Indraja is in the tenth house, one have many children, happiness from progeny. They are wealthy, splendorous. They have permanent sources of income, and they are famous as well. Permanent sources of income also relate to good investments. Good income through investments or someone who is investing a lot of money, getting good benefits out of it as well. When the Indrachab goes to 11th house, the person gains money through all type of undertakings. That means there is no business in which he is unsuccessful. They live a disease-free life. When they are angry, they can destroy a whole lot of things. So basically, they have a destructive anger. Right? They know about mantra, well-versed in mantra shastra. And if they do mantra, chant mantras, good results are quickly felt. See, any mantra you do, they will give results. But when mantra chanting is recommended as per the horoscope, this is the best, most effective and quick result. Right? If you dedicatedly do a mantra for three, four years, for sure it is going to give the result. There is no doubt about it. They are uh, loved by women. Uh, that means they have a good marital life as well. And whenever in this video, whenever for whatever uh, placement of these planets I have told loved by spouse, the same combination also translates to being popular between women or being popular between people of opposite gender, which is also a very uh, strong loophole or uh, rather pitfall for uh, you know getting into the trap of extramarital affairs and such relations as well. Right? They have a good marital life. They are well versed in attracting people from far away also. So they are like very attractive and they are very good into planning and executing things. This is when Indrachap is in the 11th house. Let me come to the next planet that is Upaketu, uh, signified in Jagannath Hora by the word UK. This planet is also generally taken as a benefit and is considered good in good houses and bad in bad houses. When this Upaketu is situated in the ascendant, 
one is well versed in all streams of knowledge so basically you know they may not be much learned but whatever thing you tell them to do they can successfully complete it they enjoy in life you know what does it mean right they are clever in speaking and keeping their point forward they are popular and complete in all senses right so complete in all the qualities complete family and complete personality and all these things when this upaketu is in the second house one is an orator speaks well sweet spoken he is beautiful that means it is his real life he is a poet poet means someone who knows how to play with words and how to use it for your benefit right one is a pandit which means they are well learned and intellectual as well they are humble they have happiness in life uh, that means people are supportive and they earn enough to uh, get whatever they want and they have good vehicle also when this upketu is in the fourth house one is beautiful they have all the good qualities they are satvik in nature they know about vedas the holy sciences they have a scientific temper they are inquisitive they are always happy. whenever we say someone is satvik it does mean they have good qualities and they are motivated by the quality of doing good to others and doing good to the world this is a rough uh, translation of what satva indicates but i think it will be sufficient to explain my point when this upaketu is in the fifth house one is happy they enjoy life uh, they know all the arts they are well versed in all aspects of life they take all the responsibilities they know about logic and rationality they are good in rational thing they are very logical they know how to come across anything or solve a problem they are intelligent they are a good orator they are dedicated and devoted to their preceptors when this uh, upaketu is in the 6th house one wins over their enemies wins in competitions they have a long social circle of friends and supporters they are quite valorous good risk taker taking risk also suits them and only after taking risks they will get the good results in life they are beautiful they are clever but some bad results such as pain in the body accidents disease etc is also to when this upaketu is in the ninth house one is a vaishnava who is devoted to vishnu or krishna if they are not devoted to vishnu or krishna this means see whenever things like this come that when upaketu is in the ninth house one is devoted to vishnu if one is not devoted to vishnu then they should be devoted to vishnu to get the good result of this planet or complete good result of this planet right they are happy in disposition they always think good of everyone even they think good of all the living beings they are well versed in everything well versed in whatever they do and they undertake their duties or they wish to contribute towards the religion they follow this is when the upaketu is in the ninth house when the upaketu goes to the 10th house this person have happiness and good fortune they are loved by women that also means they have a good marital life and also means that they are very flirtatious and can have chances to get into more than one relationship right they are into philanthropy and they live in the company of intellectuals those who have upaketu in the 11th house they always earn money in all the undertakings that means no business go bad for them right they are religiously inclined rich beautiful business free body also they are valorous they are engaged in beneficial and auspicious deeds and they are very learned very intelligent and they are by nature and intellectual right so these are the results these are the good results for all these planets in other houses when these planets are situated they generally give bad results related to those houses so how to make it up for example dhuma which is a very bad planet when this dhuma is situated in the like uh, yeah when this uh, like vetipa vetipa is a bad planet and there is no good result told for vetipa in the 7th house so what to do when vetipa is situated in the 7th house it will give bad result related to 7th house that will be delay of marriage denial of marriage break in marriage like 7th house also in gets travel so loss through travels Seventh house also gets war and competition, right? So losing in war and competition, getting humiliated in war and competition, 
that seventh house also indicates sexuality. So sexuality related issues. Seventh house also indicates body pain. So pain in body. Seventh house also indicates humiliation. So the one who is getting humiliated, right? In other houses that are not mentioned in these video, this video, these planets give bad result, right? And that's it for today. I will once again repeat the three major points that I have told in the starting. In the tradition, there will be in the astrological tradition. And I am, see, I am born into a family which have a sixth generation long parampara. So my grandfather's grandfather's father was an astrologer and we are an astrologer in the succession. Right? And I am learned in the parampara of Varamir. Right? That is uh, being practiced from 470 470 BC. So it is quite a long parampara that I belong to. And in this parampara, in the parampara, right, this is the only parampara that Varamir created, right? Because the parampara of the sages, etc., got destroyed with invasion. The parampara of Varamir remains intact in the same way like the text of Varamir remains intact. And that is some intellectual talk that I think people are not much interested in. So leaving that aside. Right, so I belong to the parampara, the only parampara, right? And in this parampara, if one looks at a horoscope without considering these planets, one will be considered a fool. So don't commit this mistake, right? In parampara, as such students will not be taken, right? Or will not be taught further to commit this mistake. Even sages highly recommend looking at a horoscope with respect to these planets. Sages go to such an extent that even if, uh, you know, there are all the good planets in a particular house, but these sub planets indicate bad results related to that house, then one should not say complete good result related to that house. They should keep in mind the bad results that will be given by these planets and will should uh, tell the result accordingly, right? So no analysis should be done without considering these planets, right? And specifically in the chart of successful people, right? do this as a homework. In the chart of successful people, you will see, see, we have talked of five planets like Guma, Parivesh, Vatipat, Indrachap, and Upaketu. These are the five planets, right? In any horoscope, two or more than two of these planets being situated in those beneficial houses that I have just told makes the person fortunate. Even if uh, such person have the worst horoscope in the world, they will have the best life, right? I hope you understand what I wanted to convey. This is, I think this is the principle which uh, no one can teach you except me uh, because we belong to the parampara, right? Thank you for patiently listening to it, right? Uh, dhanyavad, uh, have a good time ahead. Thanks a lot.